This week we created one of the best questing systems like some of the most popular RPGs ever made. Games such as Skyrim, The Witcher, and many more games like this use these types of questing systems to create their beautiful quest lines. Using scriptable objects, a completely modular system, and other cool features, we were able to create one of our own custom questing systems. In addition to all of that programming nonsense, we also have some very cool models to showcase and some other awesome adjustments like some very, very sexy water. And right before we hop into this video, smash that subscribe button if you guys haven't already, that helps us out a bunch. And without further ado, let's hop right into this devlog. On stream, we introduced a new water system that just looks so, so good. Wait, wait, I, I, I can't do this. The Discord already made too many memes from the stream about me just thinking the water looks sexy. So I apologize, but that water just looks amazing and you guys cannot tell me it doesn't. We decided to change the water in our project just so we would fit the style a bit better. We wanted a powerful water system that isn't just a plane with some shading on it, but rather we wanted a whole package with spline, custom water areas, a low poly waves, and some other amazing features. So after getting this water shader, I decided to just add it into the project without reading any documentation, which is never a good thing I love it i love it it's that's just awesome i don't know what else short little okay oh gosh this is hilarious what have we done to excelsior's character this is great or some people may say it is a good thing who knows it's personal preference so anyways we failed on stream so <laughs> what a surprise but after updating unity to the lts and getting that sexy eye softening dark mode it worked amazingly apparently when you read the description and there is a minimum version of unity it means you kind of need that version or higher to actually let the shader work properly crazy who knew like seriously like i don't i, I didn't Anyways, we got this water shader in and it looks fantastic. Let me know what you guys think in the description down below. At the start, I wanted to finish the AI system in only about two weeks. <laughs> but as you guys can tell, it has been much longer than that and it's still not finished. So anyways, this week we continued on the AI just chipping away at this larger whole goal and we got a couple of bugs fixed. This bug actually broke the immersion of combat and made the AI just kind of feel stupid. <laughs> stupid. Overall, after fixing this bug, it made combat feel more refined and made the enemies actually feel alive. It's alive! The issue stems from the battle circle we implemented earlier, so a quick recap of this issue. Whenever the enemies transition from being backup to an attacker, they would scoot forward towards the player. But due to some odd conditions, they wouldn't actually attack the player and instantly transition back to being a backup, causing this weird sequence of events where they would scoot forward, then start strafing, and not attack the player like they should be doing. We fixed this super, super, super simple bug. Okay, something is... Okay, let's go to this orc. Let's just turn... Oh, I was looking at the wrong orc. Oh, that's why that makes so much sense. <laughs> okay, okay, maybe it wasn't the simplest, but in my defense, it was late and we worked on a lot of other things before then. But after a while, we slapped some drop downs to the correct option and it worked like a charm and we got on our merry way. The other awesome feature that was completely overdue was the jump back after the orcs finished attacking. Currently, whenever the orcs finish attacking, they kind of just stand there and just get destroyed by the player because, you know, Smart AI stand there and get killed like men, right? <laughs> that made no sense. But after implementing this feature, it was a very small feature, but it made the enemies have a sense of danger towards the player. So instead of being a very intelligent enemy and finishing their attack, then letting the target just completely wail on them, it now jumps back to safety after finishing its own attack. So, so you know, it's a little smarter now. You know, just a tiny bit. All of these features are now coming together to make the AI as fun and as interesting as possible. Working together, if you squint really, really hard and ignore some of the major bugs remaining, it basically looks like Dark Souls. Uh, kind of. Oh. 
Even though we fixed a few bugs in the last episode, there are some major features missing from the current revamp. One huge oversight in the revamp is that I completely forgot that we had crouching and swimming. Which now that I think about it is kind of a big oversight, but like who knew, right? Though Captain Conrad and I... <laughs> Again, mostly Captain Conrad and I held the flashlight. We were able to get most of the rotations to work. But after embarrassing myself on stream, I realized that there was a bit more work to do. So instead of being a big programmer and putting on some big boy pants and figuring it out, I decided to go and cry to Captain Conrad to help me fix it. <laughs> I mean, I mean, kinda? I'm kid joking? I, I can't even say I'm joking because like... <laughs> Anyways, after a very long night spanning into early morning, we were able to get the basics of swimming working. We wanted swimming to handle the same as before because technically you can't strafe in water. Unless I'm just missing something important in life, I'm pretty sure I'm right on this one. Which I could always be wrong though. Anyways, we were able to get a checkbox to switch between a new strafing movement and our old directional movement. So after this, I slapped some code in Visual Studios and made it switch between the styles whenever it detects a player's chest below the water. After getting this to work perfectly, I had some issues with ascending and diving into the water because when don't I ever have problems? Basically, whenever you try to swim upward, it decided to go to the heavens, which isn't so good when you're just trying to swim in water. So after some more technical junk, I got it to work, thankfully. So after all this development, this is kind of where we stopped on movement for this week. We still have crouching to implement, so that's just gonna be fantastic. So now after clickbaiting you guys to watch this video till this point, here we are. Carl spent a long time trying to figure out exactly how he wanted to handle questing. And let me tell you guys, let me tell you guys that this is the first time in a while Carl has actually been useful. Just kidding, or not. But seriously Carl, great job on questing, it feels and it just is so easy to implement new quests so that's just a huge props to you. Oh right, I probably should go more into detail about this because videos end up being me showboating what I did and kind of just skimming over what our team members did, which is... It's kind of messed up. So over this last month, Carl was hard at work trying to squash some important bugs. I would love to tell you guys what they were, but I wasn't paying attention when Carl was discussing them. Something about delegates... Or, or wait, maybe it was just that I'm not smart enough to understand what he was talking about, which could be a very big possibility. Anyways, after he got this all sorted and figured out, he was able to showcase off his brand new feature in the stream and it was amazing to show off to our viewers. If you missed the stream, there will be a card in somewhere on the screen telling you guys to go watch it, so go click on that video and go watch it because it was amazing. Wait, but don't click off too yet or the watch time will just get ruined and this video will go nowhere. Please, please, please just stay. Please stay, guys. <laughs> Okay, but anyways, but for the lazy people that won't go and watch the stream after this video, I'm going to show you guys a small segment showcasing the quest building. He's from Spawner, and then we're going to go down here to the birdhouse orcs, murder orcs, and then... We're going to drag that onto that field. There you go. Thank you. We're going to do on entity kill. There we go. Yeah. Are we set up? I think so. And now to break up some of that boring nerd talk, Periphery was able to work on some awesome reefs. I know, reefs. But before we just showcase off this awesome addition to the under the sea, let's talk about this awesome new model that Excelsius made. Earlier this week, Excelsius created an amazing new orc model that was going to be the new archer enemy. He modeled it based off a small indie game called Shadow of Mordor or War. I don't know if you guys heard of this, this series, but it's, it's kind of small, so if you guys haven't, I don't blame you guys. But Excelsius did a fantastic job modeling up this orc, and it nails exactly what I want from an archer. So after finishing this model, he slapped it over to Peripherator and asked him to rig the model up for him. Since you know, Peripherator is like the rigger too. <laughs> 
poor peripherator, he just kind of kind of needs to do everything for us. Anyways, with the teamwork of both of them, now we have a fully functioning model that will collect dust until someday I finish the main warrior orc AI. So back to the coral. So I nicely asked Peripherator if he could create a lot of coral in about a day. Just, you know, as a nice team manager would do, I gave him a super tight deadline. Just kidding, <laughs> kind of. I asked him if he could create a few coral plants to put underwater and have them by Monday, just so I could show off the swimming with some amazing new models. And he replied that it shouldn't be a problem and I was looking forward to what he sent me. And when he sent me that render, oh boy, I was blown away. These coral reefs look very, very corally. I don't know if that's a real word, but in all seriousness, he did a fantastic job and it just looks amazing. So give them two a huge thank you for working so hard on the art. Thank you all for tuning into this week's work. Before we thank our awesome supporters, I wanted to thank all the amazing donators during the stream. We were able to reach our donation goal and actually go over and get as high as 125% of that goal. So a huge thank you guys for all of that. It means a lot that you guys are so generous. In addition, I wanted to get the community's opinions on the updates over this week. What are your guys' thoughts on what we did? Anyways, let's give a huge shout out to Tofster and Token for their awesome support. In addition, let's give some praise to Deathstroke, Inconspicuous, Delta, Max, Artem, Tajna, and Monsieur. Without you guys, this project would have been very difficult to accomplish, so I just wanted to thank you guys for supporting us and, you know, just believing us in general. And on that note, I will see you guys in the next devlog.